Hello YouTube, this is Maître des Blocs, and today I have something pretty interesting to show you guys. I have been working on another concept, Camille Block concept, that I wanted to show you guys because I thought it was really interesting and it might serve some purpose for someone. So let's get into it. Here I made this box. It says Ortega in a nutshell. Cross or die. And this might seem more like Candyland than Space Quest's Ortega. This is the lava pool that I made to replicate Ortega's stream. I know it's a bit lame, it's not really deep, and it's really easy to just jump into it. Uh, above it, I mean. And it's not really a hard challenge for parkour, but if you ever have to fall into this, something pretty cool happens. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. So, this thing I have been discovering from a video of Simply Sark that you can put custom, custom overlays on your screen. Holographic overlays with text and a bunch of other things using using items, items that you hold. In our resource pack, you can edit items display, angle, coordinates on the screen, and size. So that's what I did here, and I put it centered. I use the same concept of not turning my head, I'm unable to turn my head, as I did in my uh, video about the um, falling concussions in Minecraft. But I made a custom menu here, trying to remake Space Quest's um, death menus into Minecraft. And I thought that was a, that was a pretty cool pretty cool trick um, for someone that would like to make a map like the old Sierra series or anything. Anything, really. I'm going to explain in this video how to make the holographic text, too. Simply Sark is a really great YouTuber, but he did not explain how to make this into a resource pack. And I did not have any tutorial or anything to see how to do it. So I explored the code myself and I found how to do this trick. So I'm going to be sure to tell you guys for those who don't know. And the pretty cool part is this. I can select what button I want to select on my menu. So if I do restore, bam. I get transported right back where I was just before I fell into the lava. I am still in fire, and that's a little, a little problem with it. So I have to keep fire resistance for that matter. So it's not perfect, but it still works for me. And let's fall in it again. Yeah, yeah, creepy music you play. And for restarting, you just throw this all up there. Boop. And you get sent right back to the beginning. And the last one is quit. And this one, I'm not sure if it will work with the changes I made. Let's test this out. Boop. Yup. <laughs> it quit the game. <laughs> and this... This is totally a good example to show how you can use uh, game crashing to your advantage in maps. And there we're back. So at this point you're probably wondering, Maître des blocs, what is this witchery? How do I do this in my own resource pack? I want to make wonderful, amazing holographic displays in my map. Well. I'm going to show you that. And I don't know, now that I think of it, if there are any other tutorials on the internet already telling you how to do this. I couldn't find some, but that doesn't mean there are not any. So if I'm wrong on this, and I might be, but just in case no one explained as of now, I'm going to show. So let's begin. I'm going to use another star for this, because another star is a 2D item. 
and it has a cross in the middle. So it'll be really easy to compare that with our crosshair in the middle of the screen. The first thing you have to do, find the item you want to change. I'm going to change the next star. Then pause your game. Then tap out. And go into, I already opened right here, your resource pack folder. And this can be found under your C drive, users, your username, app data, roaming, dot Minecraft, resource packs. And app data is a hidden folder you can find really easily by just typing percent app data percent into the search bar, just like this. Like that, without the cap, capital D. But that is how you find your resource packs folder. Once you found your resource packs folder, you have to find the resource pack you're either creating or you have to create one. And if you're going to create one, you're going to extract the version you get from Minecraft versions. And then you get into the version you want. I can just say 1.8. And then there is a dot jar and dot JSON. You have to open this up with 7-zip or any, um, anything that can modify classes in, into a dot jar. Then you extract all the assets. That's what you're going to use to make a resource pack. But I'm not going to explain how to make a resource pack because if you're going to watch this video, you probably already have one. But once you have a resource pack, for me it is 1.8 default texture pack. Click on that. Go into your assets. Minecraft. And then models. On the items. I already modified some of mine. For example, I used rose red. So rose Nope. Red. Die red dot Jason. And here's what you will need to put as numbers into the one you're going to modify. So I'm going to just put that there. Go back here and go nether star. I'm going to modify the nether star right here. Okay. But here, here's what the interesting thing is. Display. Display is how the item is going to look either into your hand from another perspective external from you or from your own perspective. So that's where the third person and first person comes into place. Third person means how do others see the item into your hand? First person see, um, that means how do you see the item into your hand? So if you press F5, you should be able to see the item, how it seems into the third person, but you don't need to modify this. This can remain as it is. All those numbers and stuff can remain as they are. This is the part you're going to modify. Rotation, the numbers are by default 0, minus 135, and 25. You have to change that to be 0, minus 45, 0. And for the second one, the translation, Right now, here it's by default 042. You have to change this to be 0, 11.2, and minus 15.75. And for the last one, this can be whatever you want. The rotation and translation is putting the item, first of all, by the angle you want it to be, and the second one is positioning it to the middle of the screen. But the scale, that can be whatever you can possibly imagine. That is just how big the item is going to render in your game. Let's see what happens if I do 1.7. Let's save that. Let's go back into Minecraft and reload the resource pack. Okay. So now, as you can see, the Nether Star is right there in the middle of my screen. And you might be telling me, I know, my crosshair is not in the middle of the yellow dot. But the item's middle is in between those four pixels where my crosshair is and not in the middle of the yellow dot. And it's not perfectly 100% centered, but this is the closest I could get it without going into crazy decimal numbers to get it centered enough that it would look perfectly flat and centered onto your screen. So right now... I have another star floating onto on my screen. Uh, I mean, onto my screen. Now you can change the scale of it if you want. I'm going to just try 3.0 all the way. 
Whoops. 3.0. And... 3.0. Let's save that. Did I save it right? Yep. Okay. Now let's reload the resource back. Boop, boop. And now the nether star is quite a bit bigger. But it's still perfectly centered with the middle of your screen. That's how you do. You can do this for your resource packs. Be um, be aware though that if you have view bobbing on, this will happen when you walk around with your item. So if you turn it off, you should be fine with that. The text doesn't change. If you have text, it won't just wiggle around. But unless you move your head, well, that is not something you can change. And the cool thing with this trick is that since you're holding an item, your arm doesn't even show up. So it actually really looks like a display. If you give yourself incredible slowness and you cannot see anything, you're in pure darkness, multiple different options to select what menu you want, or what uh, button on the menu you want, like for example, what I did with these ones. Every single one of these has a different texture, so a different button is selected. But yeah, that is how you can do this for your own maps. I hope this was useful for someone. I hope you like this trick and that you're going to find some really cool uses for it. And that's all I got for you for this one. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope I gave you some enjoyment for the day. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Merde blocs.